first though, uh, let's, let's just enumerate the components of the machine so you know what's in front of us here. Are we cooking here? There we go. Can you see that slide? Not too well, huh? Oh well. Well, it's, it's a picture of this. No, it's a picture of the whole business is what it is. So I'll just point. When I took these pictures, I didn't have a clear idea of what you would be able to see. <clears throat> the component consists of the, of the, Fairlight consists of the components that you see in front of you. It is a system. At the heart of the system is a full-scale uh, general purpose microcomputer that's in this mainframe here. It, uh, it uses two 6800 processors that are interleaved for very rapid and efficient data management. Also in the box are eight individual channels of digital audio. It means each channel has its own D to A converter. Eight, eight D to A converters, eight audio outputs. So from the outside, if you look at the back, this looks like the output of an eight track tape recorder or eight mic lines coming in from a, a, re a recording session. And from there, uh, they're handled exactly in, in the conventional manner. They're plugged into a mixing board and individually controlled during the mix down process, if you so desire. Or you can, there's a mix available too. You can play straight out. <clears throat> Jordy mentioned the discs. They're, probably, they're really the most important thing. And when you think about using electronic hardware to make sounds, uh, you have to realize what the difference is between a system that has one of these behind it and a system that has a whole bunch of circuit cards and patch cords and whatnot. The, the computer is a general purpose computer. The digital channels are, are general purpose channels. They can hold any waveform. What they do, what waveforms they hold, and how they work with them, and how they move them around, is contained, uh, the instructions for them are in contained on this disk. This disk uh, is a software program, an operating system for the entire shebang here. It's a product of many man years of work. It's, uh, it, it's like a very complicated script containing uh, hundreds of thousands of characters language characters, not people characters. Uh, and uh, as Jordy said, it is updated uh, every six months or so. The development of this is an ongoing activity by the manufacturer. Now you think of uh, you know, going, going to a uh, music store and buying a, a nice shiny ax with uh, a few dozen knobs on it or going to your professional audio dealer and buying a multi-track tape recorder or mixing console. Along with it comes uh, something about this thick, if you're lucky, and it tells you how to work it. And then they kiss you goodbye. You know, if, they, if they happen to figure out a better way of, uh, of building a circuit, or getting the noise down, making more tone colors, sure, they'll let you have that. You buy next year's model, trade in this year's model. This is not the case. It's a fundamental difference in approach, a fundamental difference in the relationship between the user and the supplier. That when Fairway comes out with a new disk, they don't soak you for a new system. They don't even soak you for new software. They soak you for the price of the material here, which is two drinks, which is not much soaking. <clears throat> the second disk uh, is my disk. I have several discs here, but the one that I just put in is my disc. It's the sounds that I've assembled for this presentation. Some of the sounds I developed myself and some I've uh, liberated from other sources. You can think of this as a notebook, as a scratch pad, as a, as a library. And back when I was in college, uh, I, I had a gig with a four-piece dance band. I was a piano player. When we went from gig to gig, uh, we took our fake books. Well, this is, this is a fake book, and it's a long time since a keyboard player has been able to go from one gig to the other with just a fake book. <clears throat> I might uh, point out in, in that regard that uh, these instruments are so standard that a Fairlight anywhere in the world will take any of these discs. I prepared the, this disc 
back in North Carolina, brought it here, plugged it in. I, it's been played around now on three or four different machines. It will undoubtedly be played on more machines than that one by the time we're through. And the results are always the same. There's another fundamental difference between digital and analog machines. That when Ray Dolby wanted to establish a standard for noise reduction, he had to work very hard to, to get every hardware manufacturer of this analog noise reduction systems to use the same curve. With digital, uh, it's much simpler. Uh, the, the instruments that Fairlight makes anywhere in the world can be used by any other user with his own discs. Now the Fairlight doesn't do everything. I, I don't want to stand here in front of you telling you that this is uh, the be-all and end-all of everything. It, it may be able to produce a very wide variety of sounds, in fact any sound you can hear, but it doesn't do everything. It doesn't incorporate all known functions. But I'm not going to talk about its limitations because they're not important. No more than if I were giving, giving you a lecture on the piano that I point out that it doesn't sound like a string section or a, or a hot trumpet player. But the advantage of a piano is in what it can do and what it does very well. The same is true of any musical instrument or musical instrument system, including the Fairlight. What it does very well is handle waveforms. It handles waveforms in three separate ways by getting them from the outside world through a, a microphone or a line level, by having them drawn right on the screen, one cycle, you draw one cycle right on the screen and then it goes into the machine, or by synthesizing them through harmonic synthesis, that is we can specify the strengths or amplitudes of 32 harmonics. <clears throat> Why don't we do a demo? A little louder, please. This sort of. What's that? Okay. We're going to record my voice. I'm getting in tune here. Now, my voice is in the machine, and I can play it if I want to. Of course, the sound... Uh, I've only, I haven't recorded an infinite length of sound. I've recorded... Uh, I, th I think I'm going to ignore the screen. I've, uh, I've recorded one second of sound in this case. To make that a sustained sound, we'll put in... Put in a loop. A loop is, uh, if you can imagine a, ta a piece of tape loop going around in circles, uh, that's when you join the back of the sound onto the front. Well, I've, I've made the same sort of loop, only instead of joining the back onto the front, I've joined a small part of, in inside the sound onto another part of it uh, further toward the front. I can make this loop any size uh, I want and position it anywhere in the envelope. That's one of the controls I have. Once we have the waveform in the machine, and it is not yet uh, recorded on a disc, it is, it is in the machine waiting for us to work on it to shape it. We can specify an attack time, we can shape the attack, we can specify a decay time, we can add vibrato, controlling the speed and the depth, we can uh, specify glissando, we can put the loop in, and uh, most interestingly of all, we can splice this, uh, any part of the sound onto any others and continuously crossfade from one to the other. <laughs> 